Lake County, it's WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160. Good morning and thanks so much for being with us here today on uh, this Wednesday morning, Wednesday, 22nd day of February. That means we're how many days away? Six, about a week, a little bit, a little bit over a week away from an interesting program coming uh, to IUP. It's their Big Ideas uh, program and Dr. Lynn Botello is here to talk to us about it. Uh, this is a program that's been there for a while, but a new guest speaker is coming in. We want to learn about it. It's brought to you by Marcus and Mack, voted best personal injury law firm in the best of Indiana County contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. How are you? I'm doing great, uh, particularly for a Wednesday. With there you snow. Go. I'm a girl of uh, spring and summer, so <laughs> let, let us let us count down. Yeah, I am too. Um, I'm exactly the same way. It's like the warmer, the better, and uh, this isn't hitting it yet. No, <laughs> but hey, I can, the uh, light's coming, so I'm, I'm good. Yeah. And thank you so much for having us. Um, oh, it's our we're pleasure. really excited to be here. This is a, an interesting program we're talking about here. And the guest speaker coming next week is Roosevelt Montaz. Tell me about him. Oh, he's an amazing individual. Um, and, in fact, we're super proud that he uh, uh, built his entire schedule around IUP because he really likes what we're doing. Uh, Roosevelt Montas is um, an author of a book called Rescuing Socrates, mm -hmm. Why Reading Great Books Save My Life and Why They Matter for a New Generation. Um, and, basically, Roosevelt talks about what we call great books or transformative texts and how these books speak to all of us. It doesn't matter if we're young or old or what color, what gender, they speak something to the human soul. And for example, in my class, we're reading Dante's Inferno, 650 year old poem. Uh, students engage with it. We're, it's a description of hell. Um, and we're throwing, we're throwing people into hell left, right, and center. Um, but it's speaking to students now. And it's like, oh, this is something that I don't want to be. And so we're engaging that way. Um, so anyway, Roosevelt, uh, his talk allows us to step into the shoes of others to gain kind of a, a bigger world perspective. In fact, it's uh, one of the things that uh, businesses really want is uh, employees with empathy. And great books allow us to do that. Um, so it allows us to understand the complexities of of the world and the beauty of all the people in it. Mm -hmm. um, Roosevelt's fascinating. He came from the Dominican Republic, um, um, grew up uh, in Queens, entered Colombia uh, through a special access scheme. And so having the chance to read these classic texts really actually changed his life. And he's been able to circle back and form a great books or a transformative text uh, foundation for uh, students who are hoping to be first-generation university students. Yeah. So he's very keen about what we do here at IUP. Because at IUP, we just don't transform individuals. We transform entire families. So um, I'm very excited to have him. Um, and the other thing is, he's actually a really nice person. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's great to talk to. He's just a he's just an, a, he's an upright person, and I'm just super glad to have him in the Indiana community for a day. Well, it's it's interesting because um, the way you describe him, uh, it seems like he would be really the model that you are aiming for with the Big Ideas whole series, the whole program. Well, I steal all of my big ideas, and I steal every good idea, and I've stolen this actually from Roosevelt. He's in some ways the driving force behind it. Um, IEP, we've been fortunate enough with Big Ideas to get some help from the Teagle Foundation and the National Endowment for the Humanities to help set up a program called Big Ideas transformative culture and the professions. And what we're trying to do is take students in their first year and open their minds up. It's a curiosity first program um, and to give them transformative texts, per, uh, professional experience. Um, we really want to create civic leaders for our community. And we're the evidence, and it seems to be working, is that we're taking jobs and turning them into professions. So if I can get a student to speak science to civilization, if he can take his or her big idea and explain it to me, mm -hmm. that's going to grow that profession. They're not going to be, you know, they might get the first couple of promotions, but this is something that can really elevate them into something uh, much bigger. And so the uh, program was built around a series of, well, big ideas. For example, um, what is human? I cannot answer that. There are no right answers for any of these questions. Um, and so we're reading Frankenstein, for example. And 
diving into bioethics, the idea that there are no right answers just initially just frightens the students. But it causes them to dig deep, think deeply, find out what they really think, mm -hmm. and recognize that they have a voice. And you know, the university is called self-advocacy. But find out that what they think and what they say matters. Um, so with this, we um, they tend to flourish. They step up, and it's like, yes, I can listen to all kinds of different points of view. I don't need to agree, but here is my position, and here are the reasons why I think so. So we're, we are creating those civil, civic leaders that um, we're so proud of at the university. Really also highlights uh, the value of uh, liberal arts education, doesn't it? It really does. And uh, the liberal arts education is, um, it teaches you a little bit about everything in the big, in the big wide world. So. Um, it, it's often misunderstood, that term liberal. Um, it, it teaches you about humanity. And so the class that we're doing combines a couple of liberal arts credits into one global multicultural awareness into humanities literature. And uh, rather than separating things out artificially, we try to weave them all together, just like, well, just like the big world we live in. Yeah. Um, so it's exciting. Um, and one of the things that they do in this program is a creative midterm. Uh, for example, our Design the Perfect Human. And uh, it's a group work, and it'd be anything but a paper, a poster, or a PowerPoint. And we get amazing stuff. Our students are so talented. We get yeah. podcasts. We get videos. We get, we get radio. Um, <laughs> it's, it's amazing. And we sit back for a week and watch our colleagues present and we realize there's so much talent in the room and so much talent at IUP. Yeah, I remember um, going to IUP back in the early 80s and um, uh, the literature classes that I was taking at the time. And uh, just last week, I have book, uh, uh, book agents who send me books all the time, and they, they pitch me as to whether I want to interview the authors. And I got a pitch last week for a new book of short stories about the North American outdoors. Oh, Oh, great. Uh, and uh, it, it just came yesterday. And I, I would really, what grabbed me about it was I remember reading Hemingway's Big Two Hearted River back at IUP in 1980 or 81, and uh, how that story still impacts me today. Right. And it's in this book of, of great American short stories. There's Jack London in it, and there's, there's just all kinds of different authors uh, all celebrating the North American outdoors. And you realize how that topic reaches into every aspect of your life, no matter where it is you go. Exactly. Um, and that's what makes them, I think, transformative texts. And this is what Roosevelt will be talking about, some of the key things in his life, like Socrates, for example. Mm -hmm. um, Gandhi is another thing that he's, he, I assume we'll be talking about. But every time you read them, you get something else out of them. They, they somehow embed themselves in whatever it is, this human spirit that we have. Um, and they stick with you. And yeah. well, the penny will drop later. Um, and you go, oh, I get it. And I've read Frankenstein a million times. It's still one of my favorite books. And every time I read it, I'm in a different place in my life. And I get something else out of it. Yeah. March 2nd, 730 uh, at Sutton, right? Uh, yes, in, in Sutton Gorilla. Hall, 730 in Gorel, uh, Visado Hall. And, and can anybody go to this? Absolutely is open to the public, and as many people as we could have in the room, it would be great. Uh, Roosevelt is entertaining, he's inspiring, and uh, we'd love to see everybody there. It's, it's a nice space to be in. How long has Big Ideas been a part of, the, of, of what you've been doing in IUP? Well, it's been fabulous. We're coming to the end of our second year, actually. Yeah. Um, a, a little bit of a, a brag is it's a, it's a collaborative effort, so it's just not me. Mm -hmm. uh, we started with one class last fall. Uh, this fall we had five big idea classes and a waiting list. Yeah. So uh, students are self-referring, advisors are seeing value programs are going, this is the sort of uh, uh, supplement to our career. It was originally designed for pre-professional students, but anybody can mm -hmm. take the program. So we're going great guns. Pretty gratifying to see it all come together, isn't it? Oh, it is. Um, <laughs> I, Todd can see my hands moving around. Um, I am excited, and I do stress that this is uh, collaborative work with my colleagues. Um, we brought together scientists. We got to brought together accountants, uh, literature people, and we put it's like, what is it that 
we really want to do here? What sort of ideal student do we want to not create, but to help facilitate their own growth. So it's just not me. It's a fabulous collaboration. We've gotten great support from the, our chair to the provost to the president. So fingers crossed we keep going. Roosevelt Montas, he's going to be uh, uh, talking on Rescuing Socrates, How the Great Books Changed My Life and Why They Matter for a New Generation. It's at IUP's Sutton Hall Garrell Auditorium, March the 2nd at 7.30 p.m. And it's absolutely free, open to the community. Everybody can come. Thank you so much for having me here. Dr. Lynn Vitello with us here this morning. It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160. Coming up, Boomer has a check of sports. In our next half hour, we talk interventional cardiology uh, from IRMC, and that's a really interesting topic in light of what happened yesterday at Pirate Spring Training in Bradenton. If you have not heard, there was a 68-year-old guest of the Pirates uh, who really wanted to go out and shag some fly balls, and he did, and as he was doing so, he suffered cardiac arrest. It happened that three Pirates team doctors were right there and that the Pirates actually have defibrillators at each of their athletic fields at the at the complex, and they, they brought them back twice uh, before they were able to stabilize them, get them off to the hospital. So interventional cardiology at work right there, we're going to learn about it in our next half hour as well. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, 101.1 FM and AM 1160. Indiana in the Morning is always presented by First Commonwealth Bank. Time to be first, member FDIC. It's 23 minutes after 8 o'clock.